Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Linda Sue Plants for You. I want to first take a moment to thank everybody that is um, has subscribed to my channel and to just point that out in the event that there are still some of you who like my channel but don't know if you have subscribed or maybe you meant to do it and forgot. So just a reminder on that and then also I will ask at the end of the video if you enjoyed what you saw and you would like to um, get more and be notified when I do more videos just hit the thumbs up button for me and that'll help me out a lot. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, one of the things I'm going to do here today that's, I got to first explain what I'm doing or not doing. And if I sound like I'm really confused, it's because I really am. I had a, a method of madness going on in my head of how I was going to go into spring and then into summer um, regarding my plants and my videos and the order I was going to do, but... I have had a real bit of a dilemma here because I have some plants that I'm not sure where I'm going to put them. I, I'm I'm just I'm in the process of revamping all of my areas in all of my rooms with all of my plants. So it's become quite an undertaking, and unfortunately, I I don't always have control over whether or not I can. Um, do a video on the days that I want to. Now, the last video I did was, um, I, I entitled it Part 1, and I'm going to put Part 2 in front of this one, just so you aren't, those of you who do follow me aren't going to be always looking for that Part 2. The problem, though, is that it's not necessarily going to be the Part 2 I wanted to make, that I had intended to make when I made the first one. I think there's only... Uh, two, maybe three plants here <clears throat> that um, I'm going to be working on today. That so there's some that I left out, but I won't. I'm not going to have time to do those, and and you'll it'll all make sense to you in a few minutes if I just stop rattling on here. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, of course, that I did talk about was repotting my asparagus spring rye, which is this one. I have never had an issue with these in the past. They've always been very, very easy to grow and always got very full and lush. And this one is. It's got very long strands on it. But I put it on the top of my one of my plant stands near one of the lights. And in addition, this thing is very um, I think it's very pot bound. I think that's what I'm going to find when I, when I take this out. I'll be shocked if it's not. Now, it's very heavy because I watered this a couple days ago. This should not still be that wet. I don't I don't know what's going on here in my house because I haven't changed you know, the humidity. If anything, it's drier than normal. I haven't changed my lighting. I haven't changed my temperature. Um, uh, I've got a few problems where I have apparently overwatered my plants, which is very unusual for me. I always, I'm an underwaterer to a fault. So when I picked this up and saw how heavy it was, I was, I couldn't believe it. So I think I'm going to set this one aside for now and go through the other ones and then we'll maybe, maybe I'll go back to that. I don't know that you need to see me repot this. It's, it's just, uh, it's a very common plant and I'm just going to put it in a bigger pot. I do, however, want to focus more, my attention more on the um, other plants that I have here. And that is, starting with this one, and this is making me very sad and worried. So I've got to get this one done today. And this is my Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Philodendron Mikens, or Meekins. I'm not sure what the proper way is. Um, and it, as you can see, the leaves are, are gorgeous. They're, they're beautiful in color. But they're kind of wilty, and I'm watering this plant now. See, I just watered this this morning, and it's bone dry. 
So that tells me it needs to go into a bigger pot. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to repot that one. Um, this was a cutting that I received from Suzette. And uh, it almost didn't make it when I first got it. But it, I took it out of the water propagation. I put it in the soil and then it finally took root and started growing nicely. So I don't know if that's the case with these that they just don't like to be water propagated because I've never had a problem with not with water propagation with any philodendron in the past. So not too sure what's going on there. And then and I just uh, my daughter actually gave me cuttings, believe it or not. Um and I say that because those of you that know her know that she always complains that she's not a good plant mom and she's really becoming quite the quite the plant mom now so it's it's very nice that she's able to give me cuttings from her plant this is um a fire stick plant also called i think pencil cactus if i'm not mistaken and i know that when this of all the research that i did on here it said when these get really cold that that's what makes them red and yellow and beautiful color. I always thought it was when they were under stress from not from too much um, sun. But I couldn't find that anywhere when I researched it so I'm not sure about that either. If anybody has um, tips on how to make the pencil cactus turn into the fire sticks please let me know. Um, one thing to mention here is these are these have the latex. Um, I think they are in the Euphorbia family. If they're not, they, they have the same kind of uh, latex that sap that's in in these. When you cut them open, you'll see it just pour out. Don't get that on your hands, folks. There are some people that are highly, highly allergic to it. Not everyone, but many people. And for those people that aren't highly allergic, some are just. Um, it causes skin irritation, which could be bad in itself. Um, and I, I personally have had it on my hands and it hasn't bothered me, but that doesn't mean it won't bother you. So be very careful when you're letting this, um, when you're make, taking cuttings from this plant. And so my daughter took the cuttings and, and put it in a baggie and I took them out so that they could callus over. And they, they are callus now, so I will be planting those. And I would like to put this into a bigger pot. I think she is outgrowing. Um, this is a Tradescantia. Um, what's the second name? I forget the second name of it, but it's also called um, Moses in the Cradle. That's a common name for it. And you'll see the, the beautiful, hopefully you can see the beautiful color on this. This was also from Suzette. She gave me a, a huge box of cuttings last summer. And this was one of them that was in there. Just beautiful. So I want to put this into a hanging basket or hanging pot so that I can have it hanging down and I can't wait to see it big and huge because I think it's just gorgeous. All right and then this plant I'm going to be taking cuttings also. Not, well I shouldn't say taking cuttings. I'm going to make this plant fuller. This is the zebra plant and My husband fell in love with this. He went to um, a store called Milliger's last spring or summer. Nope, actually it might have been even in the fall. Well, at any rate, he, he liked it. It caught his eye. And it was just a tiny little plant in a two-inch pot. And I kind of made a face and he said, What, don't you like it? I said, Yeah, I do, but they're very fussy plants. Well... He really liked it, so I said, well, bring it home. I said, you know, not that we're going to go broke over a two-inch plant. 
if it dies, it dies. So we brought it home, and he was actually overwatering it, I think, because it sat on there. He likes to be kept moist. And we all know that that can have different meanings to different people. So one day I, I caught him just getting ready to water it, and I said, whoa, wait a minute, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm putting water in since it wants to be moist. I said, I just watered that this morning. Um, and as it turned out, because it's in the bright light, you know, the top of the soil felt dry to him. So I felt kind of bad because I was so happy that he was taking an interest in these and in plants and trying to learn. But I didn't want him to kill it, so I had no choice but to point that out. What, what you see me doing right here is, because of underwatering, I've got some dried leaves here. I should be cutting those off with the scissors. So I'll just leave that alone for now. But what I want to do today is cut some of these stems down and put them back in the soil. Because that's what I did in the first place. Originally this plant only had, well, I don't know if you can see here these two stems. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see if I can get a little closer. And I so I what I ended up doing is cutting off Okay. Sorry about that. I saw something that looked like a mealy bug that scared me, but it wasn't. Um <clears throat> so I ended up cutting off like up to here and then I made a hole and stuck it back in the soil and that's what you're looking at the result of that so it rooted really nicely in the soil so I'm going to do that again and that's probably will be maybe the last or second last time that I'll do that with this plant then I'll be putting it in a bigger pot probably probably we'll, we'll see what happens down the road but look at how healthy it I mean the color on this is, is beautiful and it's very healthy. The leaves are shiny and the stems are thick and upright. And so I don't know how long we're going to be able to keep it that good. But so far she's doing real well. Um, but we want it to get a little fuller. Now when we do this, and I'll explain this to you. You're going to see some drooping leaves on the pieces that you cut off and put in the soil. Usually in the next 24 to 48 hours all of a sudden it will go limp. And you think, oh no, what did I do? But don't worry about that, folks. If you just, you know, water it moderately, don't overdo, and don't let it dry out completely. And you, you, will, you will have success with this if you do it that way. So that's one project for me for today. I should say that's three projects for today. Now I want to show you some sadness. This plant, Aglionema, was very big. I had it in a 10 inch pot. It was full. It was beautiful. And I started getting yellowing leaves and losing their color and I didn't know what was going on and and this last bout that I had when I was down um, I think I've mentioned this in my last video I, I just I was doing everything I could to, to do what I had to do for the day and I ended up over watering quite a few of my plants and I when I realized what I did I, I was so sad because that's that's a horrible way to lose a plant, you know. I mean, things happen in life, and we we uh, sometimes pl pl I I have a, had plants that no matter what you do or how well you take care of them, they just don't thrive. And I think I heard Suzette from Suzette's Garden mention one time, probably more than once, that she's a firm believer that sometimes when we buy plants from the from the uh, establishment we get them from that maybe they weren't good plants to begin with um, so that creates that forever struggle and sometimes it may not be anything we did or didn't do so don't be hard on yourself if you lose a plant because we all do we all have had um, 
that happen and I fully expect for it to happen for as long as I own plants so but this one got me this made me sad because when I did realize that I had overwatered quite a few of my plants then I panicked and I went and started looking at all of the soil and I drug out my moisture meter um, which I don't normally use I've, I've never used a moisture meter in my life but I did buy one here about two years ago because everyone was talking about them and I thought okay I'll, I'll, I'll try it but I quickly learned that that it that was more work for me than just my old method of what I see what I feel um, the weight of the pot and all of that in consideration was usually a good enough indicator for me to know when and when when and when not to water. So, um, I pulled that out and I stuck it in this pot and it was soaking wet. Uh, it was off the meter as far as moisture. But the top two inches or so, now keep in mind this was in a 10 inch pot, the top two inches of that pot were bone dry. So that told me that I had to have overwatered this at some point, and it was probably when I did it to my other, the other uh, plants that I have already showed you, my my uh, Maranta, my praying hands plant, that was overwatered too. Almost lost all of those. So I have to just be a little more careful and maybe see if I can't get some help from my. Um, family to do the watering <clears throat> when I'm not able so anyway this is this is the end and this is the result and I took these I took this out and the uh, I this might still have to be cut off I trimmed off all the mushy dead stuff and that would there was a lot of it so I'm not sure this is what we have left I think it's going to be okay what I've got left here. I'm not sure. But my experience tells me if I just continue to let this dry out, probably overnight. Because I think there's still a lot of water in these probably. They're hard, but they feel, they're cold, like they've got water in them. And then I will repot these maybe t later tonight or tomorrow morning. And then not water them for a few days. And that should come back. These are pretty easy plants on their own. All right, down. And my Zambifolia, my ZZ plant. This one, I still, I'm going to leave this out overnight because it's, there's so many roots here and I still want to go through this one more time and cut off anything that doesn't feel like this one. If they're limp, if they're limp and they're wet, folks, they're dead. And don't don't repot it back in the soil with roots that are are not viable because that's just going to cause you more problems. It might cause fungus. It will cause uh, rot. And yeah, see, it it still has a lot. Mo the majority of these are still pretty firm, but I want to give it one more day. And being that it's this easy plant, I know it's going to be fine out of water for a while. But, you know, this is a nice plant. It's, it's, see if I can <clears throat> get the whole plant in the picture for you. You see how big it is. was very very healthy prior to me doing that <clears throat> so that made me very sad and last but not least I've got these philodendron 
heart shaped philodendrons here and I had I have this is a little stand that my husband found and brought home I think he got it at the Goodwill and I thought it was so pretty and it went so well in my laundry room and underneath my cabinets there's like a little alcove over the sink and we have an overhead light in there, an LED light. So I thought putting these in here would be fine. And they are growing. I mean, as you can see, it's got new growth on it. There's some more. And I had three of them in here, but I gave one to my, to my daughter. The problem that I'm having is these are in very small pots. They dry out very quickly. And I don't think I'm going to be able to. If I could find some kind of vessel that holds water that was the full size of this, um, this whole thing, <clears throat> I think I could make it work. But there's a lot of space that's being wasted here that where these roots could spread out and they can't because they're in pots so I, I'm keeping an, an eye out I'm going to water this in a little while and then put it back it hangs on a wall and it looked very pretty there I just love that greenery over the sink there but um, like I said I don't think it's really thriving the way I would like it to so I have to figure out how to make up or find a some type of vessel to fill this screening, this stand, and then I'll repot these <clears throat> inside of that, and I'll put uh, drip, not drip trays, um, drainage holes in the bottom because I can just, this hangs up by one nail, or one screw I should say, on the wall, and I can just simply take it off, put it in the sink, water it with my distilled water, and then hang it back up when it's done running out. So that's another um, thing on my, on my list thing of things that I have to do. All right, and oh, last but not least, <clears throat> and, and by the way, I have a lot more that I have to do and that I'll be sharing with you in the future. But I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too many and then have have it get lost and, and I never get show you the after. So we're going to keep this pretty short here. <clears throat> and I know that a lot of you like to watch me repot plants. So I'm go I am going to repot today. This is going to be a rather long, long, one of my longer videos. And then um, that'll be the end. Uh, if you want to see them in the after. Okay, my anthurium. I these are well. Suzette calls them ground cover. I, I I'm I'm not real familiar with the anthurium family. Um, I know that I don't know, my brother and sister and I had bought a flower arrangement for my mom for Valentine's Day one year and it had an anthurium just like this in there. This is the one with the real, with the red, the round red disc that some people call them like flamingo um, anthuriums. They got a red, deep red, almost plastic feeling and looking flower. And my, my mom is not a plant person, never has been. But she kept throwing a little water and then taking out the stuff that was dead out of the arrangement. But she managed to keep one of these alive. And I think it's because she is such a chronic underwaterer. And when I say underwater, I mean underwater. My mom can go for two months without even checking the soil. And then she'll throw a little half a cup of water in it and her plants just thrive. I just don't get it. But... <clears throat> Her anthurium like this is huge. Her leaves are twice the size of my biggest one. Twice the size of this. This is the size of my hand. 
and she, it was covered in those red flowers. And I said, Mom, what did you, how did you do that? I don't know, I just put some water in it now and then, that's it. So, go figure. <laughs> um, I have seen videos where people put this in spag moss or in um, orchid bark, and I am going to try that, not because even though these are, I have pretty good, um, you know, foliage coming out now. I, I struggle with this plant. I'm either overwatering or underwatering. And as you can see here, I believe this is an underwatering because it's at that edge of the leaf. It's crispy and I had it near a heating source and I think it was getting blowing on there too much. So I believe that these don't like a lot of bright light. My mom's plant is probably four or five feet away from her east window. So that is not very bright light. So I moved this onto a stand that where it doesn't get a lot of light. And in addition, I'm going to change from this potting soil to um, a different kind of a mixture. I'm going to experiment with the um, sphagnum moss and the orchid bark and I'll probably throw a little bit of my um, cocoa coir mixture along with my soil uh, just because I'm such an old school person I just I have a hard time planting a, a plant and not having soil in there so I don't know we'll see I'm not sure I'm not going to do that today but I wanted to mention that and I will be figuring that out later on down the road. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's get started, shall we? We're gonna move. I'm gonna move these out of the way. pot out. I have set it on the table. I mean, I put it on the floor and I forgot where I put it. All right. Um, I also want to let you know I did wipe these off with uh, rubbing alcohol with a, with a clean, with a uh, cute, uh, cotton ball because if there is any disease from any other plants that I've used this on I don't want it to get on this one. Now you can see here the size pot difference and this is a little bit bigger than I would like to go but I'm you know I can't I, I just can't get things exactly the way they need to be sometimes. And I'm sure it'll be fine as long as I don't overwater. And that's the biggest problem with using too big of a pot. You have to put too much soil in it. And the, generally when you water a plant, the roots take up the moisture out of the soil. But once your plant has taken up that moisture, there's no way to get rid of that moisture in there. That's why terracotta works so well for people who are overwaterers. Because if you do overwater, that... And once the plant takes up what it's take, going to take, the rest will seep out of the terracotta because they're breathable pots. <clears throat> um, well, let's just get started. I'm going to put some soil in the bottom here. I'm going to have my green where we put the old soil in. Now I did water this, remember? 
what I said, there are some, most plants, not all, but most plants, when you're going to do the, usually when I'm repotting the plant, I, I let it get on the dry side before I, I take it out of its old pot. And the reason for that is I have found that it's much easier because the, the soil, the existing soil will just basically drop off of the roots and, without harming the roots. When the plant is wet like this one, the soil tends to stick to the roots and sometimes it, it'll it pull, pull them off, it'll damage. But the other side of that is, I should say the reason that I did water this one ahead of time is very simple. Whenever I'm taking cuttings from a plant like this, or the coleus. You've seen me do that one too. In fact, I've got a couple of coleus that I have to do that with again. And <clears throat> the um, I'm sorry, I just ran into a plug that I did not know was in there. So now I'm I'm really shocked that this plant didn't die because this had one of those fabric plugs. I was I thought it was a dead leaf and I was pulling and pulling and it didn't come off and I, then I realized it's it's not a leaf at all. It's that nylon plug material. I'm gonna just try and pull a little of that away. <sighs> I don't like those, my friends. I've had such bad luck with that. I I guess the lesson to be learned here is really pay attention when you're repotting something that's still in the nursery pot. Because I have in the past, before I even knew those existed, I couldn't figure out why my plant wasn't doing well. And at one last ditch effort, I took it out and I got all the dirt off of it. Oh, I don't want this to break off. And found that it had this mesh, fabric mesh plug that it was grown in. And that might be convenient for the growers, but it's sure not good for the plant. Um, it was prohibiting the growth. It was killing the plant. Now in this case it didn't do that. <clears throat> in this case it probably worked the way it was originally intended because the plant is fine. But in those couple other plants that I had that that happened to it wasn't good. So take a look. Make sure you don't do what I did here and if you're going to repot something from the nursery Make sure that you got that, that it's not in one of those plugs. Okay, now here you can see, <clears throat> there's a lot of roots here. So, and they're very damp. I'll try to just take a little bit out of the middle, not, not too much. All right, and then there's still, these are all viable roots. They're not mushy. They're so healthy. So we're going to set that right in here and get this out of the way. Oh, I'm making a mess, but that's okay. And this is just my normal mixture. Um, it's um, 
organic potting mix soil and cocoa coir and perlite and I have some more worm castings in here too. I think I'm just about to it. Maybe a little. Oh. Did you see that little bugger? Ah, ever since I got this new soil, I'm seeing fungus gnats again. Not many, but enough to worry me. I really hate fungus gnats. I hate any kind of flying insect when it gets in my house. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say every insect because, you know, sometimes I get a box elder bug. You know, those little black bugs that hang around on elm trees. And they're, uh, they're black with red design on them. I don't mind those. I usually do try to... I, I grab them and as carefully as I can and set them back outside. Because I don't think they want to be in here either. And my ladybugs, I do the same. But the fungus gnat, he's just... I don't know. He's, he's got a he's got a bad rap under under my roof. I I do not like those bugs at all. Ugh. Okay. I think that's good. Now what I'm going to do? I think I have to move this camera up a little further. There. You can see how tall she is. I am going to cut this, let's see, hmm. this one I don't think I do want to cut this, that's going to leave that stick, but if I don't, hmm. This is one that I that I cut and ridded myself, this piece right here. And she's not as sick as the others, but she's getting kind of long. I'm also going to take and cut these. Oh, it's hard to grab a hold of. I try to cut them in the shape of the leaf when I can. 
I think it's just more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. It's not always possible. And oh, when they're real little like this, they're hard to, it's hard to do. And I really, I don't mind a little bit of brown on, on some of my leaves. I'm not that much of a perfectionist, but sometimes if you don't, um, if you don't cut that off, and you don't realize that you've got a problem down the road. In other words, if I cut all the brown off of here now, and then I start to see brown on the leaves again, then I know I'm, I've got an issue that I have to deal with. So that's really my purpose in doing that. Okay, I know this looks really nice the way it is, but I don't want it to get spindly, long and spindly. So I am going to cut these back, and I am going to start with this one. And re this is much like the coleus and other ones that I do this with. You want to cut right above the leaf. I think I might want to even go down further. I'm going to go down to these two leaves. I'm hoping, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to cut right here. And I know that that doesn't look very good right now, but I'm going to get new growth here. Okay, so that's going to make it a little fuller. And then on this piece, we're going to cut these leaves off of here because whenever you have a cutting, you don't want those leaves to get in the soil because they'll create problems for you. They'll end up rotting. I'm going to take this one off too just because it's bent down so far. And that is hard to do. I know. And I think I'm going to put this one right here. And I didn't even have to make a hole because the soil is so new and it's the stems of the plant are very sturdy right now. But you see what I did there? All I did was put Generally, I'll take my scissors and dig a hole and then stick it in there and pat it down, but I didn't even need to do that this time. So, this plant will get roots, and then this is going to grow up. And I'm going to cut this one off. I don't like that it's laying in the soil. I don't know why this guy don't want to stand up for me, but... I think we're going to leave him alone. Now, you can see, you can tell how thin these the stems are compared to these two. They're much thicker. Those were the original ones that I took cuttings from before. And right here you can see where I took the cutting from. Okay. I think I'm going to take this cutting, I'm going to go down even further, because I don't see anything down there. That whole branch almost is, this is a branch that just dried up. I'm going to cut this one. If this had leaves on it, it would be where these nodes are, right? Remember, that's where the leaves and that's where the new growth comes out. I'm going to cut this all the way down to this next node. Right below it. So you got two places where growth can come from. Where the roots can come from, I'm sorry. Right? And that's a good specimen to repot because it's it's solid, it's got beautiful growth on it, it's healthy, and it's got a long stem. So let me figure out where to put that. Maybe we'll stick that right in front of the other one so it wasn't so... Oh, this one I'm going to have to dig up all. I think I'm running into the previous root ball, so I hope I'm not damaging those roots. So when I do this, 
there. And I'm going to stick it down as far as I can without having the lower leaves touching the soil. You don't want that because that's that will make them uh, rot. And remember now, I watered this yesterday or the day before, so it was pretty pretty well watered before I did this. And the reason for that, I started to tell you earlier, till I went down my side road. Um, these types of plants, <clears throat> these this and coleus and I can't think of the others right off the top of my head, but if you water them before you cut them, then the piece that you cut off is going to give you, it's going to give it a lot longer time, a, a better head start. If you try to cut these off when it's in need of water, the chances are much greater that you're going <clears> to <throat> fail and you're going to lose those cuttings. Because it takes time for them to adjust and realize that, hey, she must want us to, you know, make new roots and grow here. Yes, that's what I want you to do. <clears throat> so we have to give them the optimum start, right? So if we, it's kind of like, well, I don't know if that's such a good example. I was going to say it's kind of like uh, doing exercise on an empty stomach, which, yeah, you don't want to eat a big meal before you exercise, but you do have to eat for, you know, to get the strength that you need to do the exercising. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm giving it so that the water is getting up in the stems and the leaves, okay? And that'll, that'll take care of these up here while it's trying to grow roots under here. If you water it when it's, I mean, if you try to take cuttings when it's super dry and these leaves look like they need watering, your, your chances of failure are much, gra much greater. And that's the same with coleus, um, uh, well, almost every plant that I can think of right now off the top of my head. Um, purple velvet plant, that's another one. Don't wait. Don't wait until the, the leaves are drooping. May, water it the night before and make sure that they're standing up straight and that the water has gotten all the way to the top of the plant before you take the cuttings and that, that will help. Okay, I, I'm really... I like the way this looks right now. Hmm. Part of me is ta is saying, no, no, you got to still cut this one back. But I, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it. Right? Should I? Ah. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm going to do what I originally planned. I'm going to go back down to where I originally cut it by the node. This is a really thick one. Ooh, and I don't want to cut the one behind it. See the new shoots coming out the top? Okay, yeah. That was the right thing to do. It's hard sometimes to make that cut because, I mean, obviously our goal is to get our plants big and beautiful and when they start getting full and getting new growth and stuff, the last thing we really want to do is cut them, right? But if I don't, it's going to get tall and spindly, and then if you wait until then to, to do that, it's, it's your chances of it rooting are much less, first of all, because it's got a lot, lot more to support while it's trying to grow new roots. 
or you can take several cuttings from one stem too if you want. But I really like the bushiness here. And okay. I think that's good. And I'm going to repot this one, but I'm not going to do that on video today because I want to put that in my um, in a hanging pot, and I think the only one that I have is the one that the asparagus spring rye is in, and that's where this one's going. And I'm all I'm pretty long, I think, already on the video, so I'm going to just call it a day here and. It was just nice to get back with you all and let you know I'm still alive and kicking and and uh, moving along. I hope that this was helpful to some, uh, all of you, but at least to some of you, if not. And uh, I'll show you the results of all this when I do my tour. Okay. I really hope that you guys all have a great week, and um, I hope your winters aren't too harsh. I hope you, I hope you aren't one of the families with the, the many viruses that are going around. It's been just horrible here in Wisconsin. They actually closed down some school districts because it was so bad, and uh, it's just I don't know. It's getting worse every year. So keep yourself healthy, eat good food, eat nutritious food, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. You'd be surprised when you stop and think about everything that you touch in a day. And, um, you know, even just, you think that you're being careful, but if, if you really stop and, and take note of it, you're going to surprise yourself at how many things that you touch in a day day's time that many other people have also touched. And they may be people who are coughing and they're covering their mouth and they don't even realize that they're really sick yet. So that's one way that you can help yourself and getting lots of rest and eating good food. And hopefully that will be the case for all of us going down the road. All right, I think I'm getting long here again, so I'm going to say goodbye. I want to thank everybody for coming and for supporting me. I very, very much appreciate it. Um, I've gotten a few good tips from some of my viewers, and that, that is wonderful. That's very helpful, especially when I'm not sure about something. Um, if somebody has experience with that and they um, you know, if you want to put their advice in the comment section, that's great. I, I welcome that. So, okay. I hope you all have a good rest of your week. If I don't talk to you before then, I am going to definitely try to bring more videos to you before the end of the week, but we all know how that goes. All right. Well, you all take care. And hopefully we will see you soon. Bye now.